nearest are burning. Right. So maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe their, their nearest are burning. Right. Okay, well, either way, I get, I think I'll get started. Okay, so let me get straight right. to it. Okay. Shalom Abracha. Welcome, everyone. Frech Hanukkah. Usually, we focus on sugyas, topics, themes, and halacha that relate to the sedra, to the parsha of the week. This week, we're going to be focusing on a topic in halacha that relates to Hanukkah. And not only the background of the halacha, but the actual practice of halacha. I think, I, I think what we're going to be learning today is fascinating. It fascinates me. But I believe that the, the fascination is mainly on we, we get a, a very good window into the, the process of halacha. I know every single thing in halacha has its root within the reasonings of the Gemara. So let's get straight to it. We start with the, with the sugya in Gemara Shabbos, in, Perak, Adlikin, in which the Gemara speaks about Hanukkah. This is in, during the same sugya, the same area where the Gemara tells us about the story of Hanukkah. And the Gemara says like this, Tan Rabbanan, a rabbi is taught, this is a b'risa, mitzvah is Hanukkah. If you want to do the mitzvah of Hanukkah, the core mitzvah of Hanukkah is ner ishu beisai, one candle per household. That's number one. The hamahadrim, those who want to be more careful in doing the mitzvah, ner l'kol echad v'echad, every individual person in the house gets one candle. And by the way, this is one candle every night. The first night, everyone gets one candle. The second night, everyone gets one candle and so on. But then there's a third category and the third level. And those who are extremely careful, in other words, want to do the mitzvah behidur with beauty, then you have a machlaikis. You start off the first day with eight and then you go less and less. So basically, they still argue. They say, no, Yom Rishon Madlik Achas. The first night you light one. Mikan Ve'elach, from that point onward, you progressively increase. Moise Ve'elach, you add every day. Okay, that's the Machlekes. It's a well-known Machlekes, famous Machlekes between uh, Beishama and Beishilol and how you light the Hanukkah candles. Now, the Gemara continues to bring um, another Machlekes. A Machlekes of Amirayim, of the Chachamim of the Gemara, on um, why does Beis Hillel say this and why does Beis Shammai say that? Why does Beis Shammai say you start with eight and go down? And why does Beis Hillel say you start with one and go up? Amar Ula. Ula said, two Amurayim, two Gemara sages in in the West, in, the, in Eretz Yisrael, they argued, Rabbi Yaisi Rab Avin, sorry, Rabbi Yaisi Bar Avin, Rabbi Yaisi Bar Zvida. Rav Yaisi, the son of Avin, and Yaisi, the son of Zvida, they argued. Chad Amar, the first opinion was, The reason for Beishamai, why you start with eight and then you go down, is because you're lighting based on the amount of days that are still to come. By the way, before I go further, I just want to explain that it's not only why would you do that. So let me also give a little bit more reasoning that the Mepharshim give. It's also a matter of the ness. In other words, Beishamai say, according to this reading, Beishamai say, the first day of Hanukkah, the miracle, the oil had within it the potential of lighting for eight days. The second day, the potential went down to seven. The third day, the potential went down to six. Beishamai always follow koyach over poyo, potential, and that's why they follow the upcoming days. The time of the Beishilo, the reason of Beishilo, which we obviously know is the halacha, that we start with one and we go upward. We're lighting based on the days that are leaving, that are gone. So the first day you light one, second day two, and so on. That is the first rationale that we have for the machlaikis between Beishami and Beishilo. Beishami, you say you go after Yomim HaNechnasim, the days that are still to come. And Beishilo say you go after the days that already passed. The Chadamar, the second opinion in how to understand the rationale and reasoning of Beishami and Beishilo, is time of the Beishamai, the reason of Beishamai is connected Pareyachag. The reason why you go downward, you decrease, is because there is a place in the Torah where we see decreasing. Where is that? With the Karbanus of Sukkot. We're talking about the carbon Musaf of Sukkot. That we start off with 13, go to 12, 11. So every day, 
will go down lower and lower, decrease in the amount of, of parim, of bulls that were offered on the Mizbeach as a Musaf carbon, as actually, by the, obviously, we read this in Musaf of our davening on Sukkot. That's why Beishamay say we decrease the time of the Beisilo and the logic of Beisilo, the rationale of Beisilo going up. When it comes to matters of holiness, we increase and we do not decrease. I, I just want to mention something just to get it out of the way. You, you, we, we might still have a question. What would Basilo say about Sukkot? The Torah itself says that you go down. But nevertheless, Basilo says the rule in holiness, the rule in Kedusha is that we increase. So these are the two ways of understanding um, the Machlaikis. Is it based on following the days to come, days that left? Or is it based on the, the, the Sukkot uh, Karbanis versus the rule that we go up in holiness and we don't decrease? Rashi. Rashi, very interestingly, very uncharacteristically, when he describes this second understanding of the Machlaikis, of the disagreement between Misham and Basilo, so he explains it like this. He says, Pare achag, the oxen, the bulls, sorry, of, of Sukkot, Mismatim v'holchim v'karbanis, the Parshas Pinchas. We go, we decrease and go less, con, you know, continuously less, with the, in the karbanis uh, that are mentioned in Parshas Pinchas. Rashi see, finds the need or sees the need of giving us a maramakim, of giving us a source of where this is. He wants us to know where this is for whatever reason. The second thing is when he speaks about Beis Hillel's rationale of going upward, of increasing. We learn it from a pasuk. Once again, Rashi wants us to know that we learn it from somewhere, and I'll tell you where we learn it from. Rashi says, in the tractate of Menachis, in the chapter Shteilechem. Very uncharacteristically, Rashi wants to directly point us where we learn this whole thing. Where do we learn that the Karbanas go are decrease? And where do we learn that the that the rule in Kedusha is to increase? So the opening question that I want to pose is why does Rashi go out of his way to do this? It's a small question, but in the, in the larger scheme of things, I think we're going to see how Rashi is making a very strong point by sending us to these places to learn about these uh, reasonings of Bisham and Bissel. But in any case, let's be straight to the point. We have a machlek is Bisham and Bissel, and what does it mean to be Mahadrin, Mina Mahadrin? Bisham will say we, go, we increase every night, Bisham will say we decrease every night. Why would Bisham say this and Bisham will say that? The first reason was Bisham is following the days that are yet to come, or Bisham is following the days that pass. The second reason is Bisham is following the Karbanis of Sukkot where it decreases. Bisilo is following the rule that Mailam Bakoidish, we go up, we increase in sanctity, in holiness, and we do not reduce, we don't need to decrease. Now, let's go straight into Hawacha. The rule is that there must be a nafkamina. There must be a difference between saying this or saying that. Why would there be a disagreement, a machlaikis, in a, in the Gemara? With regards to what is the rationale of Basilo, what is the rationale of Beishama if there's no practical difference? You could say both. No, the Gemara says Pligiba, they're arguing about what the rationale is. So, Lamainaf Gemina, to use the Gemara term, what difference does it make? What difference does it make if you say Beishama is going after the days that are coming, Basil is going after the days that pass, or you say Beishama is going after Sukkis, Basil is going after Mailam Bakoidesh? If the bottom line is still the same, Bishama is saying decrease and Basil is saying increase. This is going to be the central focus of today's share. What is the nafkimina between these two reasonings? From now, almost till the end of the share, we're going to be chewing this question over. What is the difference between these two? The first difference I want to pose between saying that, uh, you know, that we're going after the days or we're going after um, the rule of increasing in Ketusha versus learning from the Karbanis of Sukkot brings us to a machlaikis amongst the Rishainim. There's a machlaikis, a well-known machlaikis of how to understand the level, 
the category regarding which Beishamay and Beishilal are discussing. The category of Mahadri Mina Mahadri. I'm sorry, I'm going to pull up again. Let's look at the Gemara. There were three categories. There's the mitzvah. The mitzvah is every, every household has one candle. There's the mahadrin. Every person has one candle every night. Mahadrin, mina mahadrin. You go up or you go down. Depends on you, if you hold Beishamay and Beishilo. The question is, do Beishamay and Beishilo hold that you should be doing this for every person in the house? Or do they hold, or are they building on the original mitzvah? The original mitzvah, which is one per household, Beis Shammai is saying you have one set that decreases every night, and Beis Hillel say you increase every night. So it's unclear, there's going to be a machoikis amongst the Rishonim, if Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel are discussing beyond every single person within every household, or just beyond the basic one per household. And this, it starts with Toysavus, Toysavus on the Gemara, says as follows, Taisu says, Ri, the way the Ri understands this Machlech is, the Beishamai and Beishilal loy kaimi ella aner ishu Beisai. Beishamai and Beishilal are actually discussing this that they're calling Mahadrin mina Mahadrin, the best way to do it is in addition to every person, every household having one candle, every household should have a set of candles either that increase according to Beisilo or decrease according to Beishamai. What's the reason? What's the rationale of Taisvis? Let's put that aside for a second. I'm going to get back to the rationale. But I want to point out that the, Ram, the Rambam, when he quotes this halacha, you see I highlighted it, he says, if somebody wants to do even better, to be more careful and, and beautify the mitzvah even better, mitzvah mina mufcher, to do the mitzvah in its best way. So what does he do? Every single person in the household gets one candle the first night. And every single person within every household increases an additional light every night. So we see, the Rambam reads it with the way I would say traditionally most people would read it. That what? It's going in addition to what's written right before it. Not only does every single person in the house light one candle, every person in the house increases every night. That's according to Beis, according to Beisilo, or decreases according to Beishama. But Taisu said no. Taisu says, when he says increasing every night or decreasing, we're talking about one menorah or one Chanukiah in a household. And Taisu has a very strong reasoning for this, a very strong logic. He says, Shekane. Yes, Hidur It's actually better to have only one if you're doing the increase or decrease, because then people could recognize what day of Hanukkah it is. Or if you, if you increase or you decrease, if you're going to have multiple Hanukkah, if you're going to have multiple menorahs in your home, in your home lighting at the same time. You can't expect somebody else to walk by and recognize what night it is. As Tosis continues, if you're going to have this for every single home, every single person in the home, it won't be recognizable what date, what day of Hanukkah it is. People would think they're going to say, oh, there's five. That's because there are five people in the home, not because it's the fifth night. So what? So therefore, he says, you must say that when we're talking about Mahadr min Mahadr, we mean in addition to the original mitzvah. And that is that every house which you're holding have one set. But what are we saying? It's actually pretty clear here. Based, according to Taisvis, what are we, what's our main concern? Our main concern is the Ika Hekera, that people should recognize what day it is. In other words, it seems pretty clear and obvious that Toysus is accepting that the main rationale of Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel is following how many days of Yom Tif is it? How many days of Hanukkah is it? Is it days that passed or days that are coming? But either way, the reason why you increase every night 
according to Taisvis, is because it's important for people to know what day of Hanukkah it is. And that's why you should not have multiple in your house. However, according to the Rambam, it seems pretty obvious and clear that he accepts that the main reason for Beis Hillel to say increase is that in matters of sanctity, we increase. And therefore, every single person in every single house should light on the first day one and the first night one and increase every night. So you see that there's an actual practical difference between do we understand the machlekes of Bisham and Bishilo as primarily uh, a, an argument about are we following the days that are coming in, days that are coming out, or primarily an argument about do we follow um, the rule of Mailam Akkoidish of increasing in Kedusha, or do we learn it from the Karbanis of Sukkot? What's the practical difference? The practical difference is do you mean every single person in the house or only one per house? In other words, it's a fundamental difference in how to read the Gemara and how to read what does Mahadrin mean a Mahadrin mean. So I, I made a chart for this. We have the opinion of Taisvis, which is that the Bisham and Basilo, or let's take Basilo, is in addition to one candle that you're supposed to increase every night. And according to Rambam, no, it's an addition for every single person to increase every night. And this would take us back to the original understanding of what Bisham and Basilo were arguing about. Taisvis would, would say they're arguing about because they want the amount of days should be recognizable. And therefore, you want to make sure there should only be one per household, so someone who walks by should recognize. The Rambam, on the other house, on the other hand, accepts that the Iker, the main rationale of Beis Hillel, is Ma'ilam Akoidish, increasing in Ketusha, and for that reason, we want everybody in the house to be lighting um, enough candles for you know the amount of days that passed. Now that. So far, we already have a an afkimina, a difference between Bishama and or how to understand Bishama and Bishilo and what the practical ramifications would be. The problem with this is it's beautiful, but it's not so practical. It may be practical back in the days before Shulchan Aruch was written, maybe 500 years ago, it was practical. But nowadays, we have the Shulchan Aruch. And in Shulchan Aruch, the, um, you know, the Ramah who writes the Haggai, the Mapa on the Shulchan Aruch, basically, he writes the notes on Shulchan Aruch. The Ramah, Ramesh Isolis, writes clearly that the Minag Pashut, the widespread accepted Minag nowadays, and I think we all could attest to this, is that in every single home, every single person should increase every single night. In that case, is there a practical difference for us nowadays between saying that the reason why we increase every night is because of Mailam Bakaydash, or because we're trying to follow the amount of days that passed. So let's see this. Um, the Minag Pashat says the Ramah, I'm going to go straight to his words. He says, Every person in the home should increase and, and light a full set of the manure of the candles. And he concludes, This is the widespread Minag. The widespread Minag is. To do mahadrin, mina mahadrin, and maybe even more than that, that every single person in the home should light the first night one, the second night two, and so on. So what are we, where are we holding? We're, we now have to try to find a practical difference in 2020. What difference is there if we look at it as we're increasing every night because of the days that are passing, or we're increasing every night because of the rule of Milo Makhredesh for Ein Merid? So I want to propose a few different nafkaminas, a few different um, ramifications and halachic differences that may be. The first one is what you would consider a case of bidiyavid. Somebody made a mistake. And the question is how to deal with that mistake. What was the mistake? Say, for example, somebody lights the first night one candle. The second night, by mistake, they also light one candle. What should they do on the third night? What should they do on the third night? Should they light three or should they light two? Now, I understand that most people today would say three, but let's just think about uh, the source of where we're getting this from. You see, if the main agenda 
and the main objective is to follow the days, the amount of days that passed, then there's no question that you should skip two and go straight to three. You made a mistake, two days in a row you lit one, on the third day you light three. However, if the goal and agenda is to increase in holiness, you will be increasing in holiness if you do two on the third night because you did only one the night before. So therefore, maybe you don't have to do all three. You don't have to light three. Lighting two would be good enough. Maybe three is even better, but lighting two would fulfill sort of the, the main goal of what Beis Hillel is trying to accomplish, which is that you should increase. Increase in holiness. But if you're saying Beis Hillel is trying to accomplish to, to, to recognize the amount of days that passed, the amount of days that the miracle passed at this point, then you're right. Then uh, no, you should not go to two. You should go straight to three. You did one, one, the third day you go to three. So that's the first case. If someone mistakenly lit one candle on the second night, how many should he light on the third? If you say that we're trying to follow the number of days, the days that pass, then you light three because that is the amount of days. But if you're saying that the agenda is to increase in holiness, lighting two would be enough because you fulfilled an increase in holiness by lighting two relative to your one of yesterday. Okay, beautiful. That is enough kamina, but that's enough kamina of bidiyavad, that it, you made a mistake. Could we now figure enough kamina in a case where it's not a mistake? Where a person did say it was not a mistake and there's still enough kamina. Let's see. And this will bring us to another case. If a person comes the first day, the second day, they light one, they light two. On the third night, they only have enough oil for two candles. It's the third night, they should be lighting three candles, but they only have enough oil for two. How many candles should they light? So a possible, possible halachic um, opinion and a logic ruling based on the two opinions of how to understand why we increase every night will lead us to say as follows. And I, I'm stressing the word possible because we're going to revisit this soon. If, okay, and let's see this. The guy only has enough oil for two candles. It's the third night. If your agenda is to increase in Kedusha and not to go down. So if you light two, you're not decreasing. So you should light too. It's the third night. You should light too. Why? Because at least you shouldn't decrease in Kedusha. At least you shouldn't decrease in sanctity. You lit two yesterday. You have two, enough oil for two tonight. Light two tonight. But if the goal is to follow the amount of days, you're anyways not following the amount of days because you only have enough for two and it's a third night. So what should you do? You should leave the category of Mahadrim in Mahadrim and go back to the core mitzvah and light just one. There's no reason to light two. In fact, lighting two might confuse people. Someone might walk through your, your, your neighborhood and walk by your home or walk by your window and think it's the second night when it's really the third. So what should you do? Light one to fulfill the core mitzvah and that's it. So this brings us to sort of a, uh, a, a possible Nafkimina as well, but the truth is, all is good and fine, as they say. It seems like we have a pretty good understanding of where these two opinions are going and where they apply in each case. And we could basically end the year now <laughs> by saying that we have a Nafkimina that is Bidiyavad, a Nafkimina in a in a case where a person mistakenly lit one on the second night, and in that case we said. On the third night, um, should you just do two or do three? And we also brought an afkimina in a case where it's l'chatchila. A person only has two uh, candles or enough oil for two candles the third night. Should you light the two because you don't want to decrease? Or you should light one not to confuse people on the day. Now this would be a good ending. But the problem with this is we're not looking deep enough into the opinions. The truth is there's, there's 
there's more to discover and more to dig into the opinions about how to understand Beisham and Basilo that once we go a step deeper into them, we have a whole nother understanding and we're going to have to apply the, their opinions differently. And usually it's a beautiful fact that the deeper you go, you're actually in a way reading simpler their opinions. And I want to just start off with a very simple difference between the two opinions that we're describing. Remember, remember what are they? Does Beishamai say decrease because of the amount of days that are to come? And Beishilo say increase because of the amount of days that left? Or Beishamai say decrease because you learn from the Karbanas of Sukkot? And Beishilo says increase because you learn from the rule that Kedusha has to increase. What is the most obvious difference between those two? The obvious difference is, is it directly intrinsically related to Hanukkah? If it has to do with the amount of days that are coming, amount of days that are going, that means that it's part of Hanukkah. You might want to say it's part of Pursuma Nisa. You're advertising, you're, you're publicizing the miracle by, by the amount of candles you're lighting, either because of the days that are coming, the days that are going, but either way, it's uniquely related to Hanukkah. Or do we say, no, the fact that you have to increase or decrease has nothing to do with Hanukkah. It has to do with the Karbanas of Sukkot. It has to do with the general rule that we increase in Kedusha, but not intrinsically and essentially connected to Hanukkah per se. It's connected to, to Jewish life or Jewish virtue is to increase. And uh, to use yeshivish terms that we've used in the past, and I'm sure we're going to use it again, because they're very helpful in terms of halacha, is it a matter of gavra or a matter of chafza? Do we say that the Hanukkah candles themselves demand that they should increase or decrease? That would mean it's part of the chafza, it's part of the guf, the body of the mitzvah, is that it should increase or decrease, and that's basically because you're following the amount of days. So it's, it's, it's related to Hanukkah itself. Or, no, it's not a matter of the, of the Hanukkah. It's not a matter of the menorah or the candles. It's a matter on me. When For me to do a mitzvah properly, I have to increase or I have to decrease. It, it's, it's on me, not on the menorah, okay? Not on the, the Hanukkah candles. The Hanukkah candles are not demanding either way. It is upon me as a Jew to 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 do it the proper way. And the proper way, according to Bishami, is to decrease, and according to Basil is to increase. Let's see how we have that. So, according to, if we say that it's a, we're following the days, then it's part of Hanukkah, part of the mitzvah of Hanukkah. If we say it's a matter of increasing in holiness, then it's a, it's a side benefit, a side advantage. It's a very important one, but it's not directly related <laughs> and intrinsically related to Hanukkah. And to say, to use the words we used before, Gabra Chefza, whose hidr is it? Is it a hidr of the neiris or is it my hidr? Is it me doing it right or is it the candles being done right? Before I go further to explain the difference between saying it this way or saying it that way, I want to point out something incredible. And that is that in the wording of, of the Rambam, of Halacha and, and Shechon Aruch, and even in the Gemara, a, a very careful reading, you will discover something fascinating. That in the Gemara, it refers to this level of doing the mitzvah as mahadrin mina mahadrin. What does mahadrin mina mahadrin mean? Mahadrin means the person who's careful in doing a mitzvah well. Mahadrin mina mahadrin, the person who's you know extremely careful in doing a mitzvah beautifully. But the Rambam changes it. He calls it mitzvah mina mufchar. So it's not me doing it well, it's the mitzvah being done in its proper way. That is a, that, that, that's a fundamental difference. Is it the mitzvah being done in its most desirable way? Or is it the person being careful and doing it in the best way? And this comes down to how do you understand this whole idea of increasing? Is it on me or is it on the candles? Is it part of Hanukkah or is it part of Yiddishkeit, part of Judaism? And, and in this case, it, it's upon me to light the menorah and increase every night because 
that is the way a Jew behaves. And what's the nafkamina? A very practical nafkamina that's actually brought in some places. It would be as follows. A person lights, let's say, let's say on the sixth night tonight, okay, the seventh night tonight, and they don't have enough oil, they light one candle, two candles, whatever it is. So let's say one candle, they light the, on the seventh night. And then, I don't know, they run to Publix, they run to Winn-Dixie, wherever they run, they buy more oil. And they, they now have more oil. Should they light the additional candles or not? So the answer really is yes. But now the question is, should they light it with a bracha or not? They already lit one candle with a bracha. Should they now light with a bracha the additional candles that they're lighting? The answer would be, it depends if you consider the additional candles as part of the mitzvah or as part of your own hither. If it's part of the mitzvah, then absolutely, you should make a bracha on the additional candles. Like we're seeing here, if we follow that it's a part of Hanukkah, that we're trying to follow the amount of days that are passing, then yes, you make a bracha. But if it's a side benefit, side advantage, so it's beautiful, you should do it. You should light the additional candles, but don't make a bracha, you already made a bracha. It's your hidur. And to quote the Ramah in, in Dark Yamosha, that means on the tour, he actually says this pretty clearly. He says, the other candles, Rishus means they're optional. That means it's not intrinsically part of the mitzvah. It's Rishus. It's on you. Uh, you know, you have a the ability to beautify the mitzvah by adding. But not that the mitzvah is being done in its most proper way by adding more. Now, now that we have, we're up to this point. We can now appreciate why Rashi on the Gemara that we brought originally, when speaking about this topic, about where do we learn to increase or decrease, he wants us to know that this is not a Hanukkah topic. When he speaks about uh, Pari the, the, the the bulls that were being offered in the base of Migdash on Sukkot, he says, Mismat in the Hochum, Karbanis, the Parshas Pinchas. The reason why you decrease according to this opinion is nothing to do with Hanukkah. And the reason why you increase according to this opinion of, of Basilo, he says, do not claim that this is a Hanukkah thing. We learn it from a Pasuk in Menachis in the laws of Menachis, in the in the in the tractate of Menachis, the Perak Shteelachem, in the chapter Shteelachem. Rashi wants us to recognize the fundamental difference between the two ways of understanding the Machlaikis of Beisham and Yisrael. And he wants us to know, is it intrinsically a Hanukkah thing or not? And if increasing and decreasing in relation to the, the Pare Achag, the uh, bulls that were brought in the Beis Hamikdash, or increasing because the rule that we go up in holiness is part of the mitzvah of Hanukkah, then there's no difference between these two opinions. Rashi wants us to know there's a major difference. Is it a matter of Hanukkah or is it a, is it a side advantage, a matter of general Jewish virtue? Now, now that we have this understanding, let, let me just repeat the core of what we just said. That if you're saying that it's part of that we want to know how many days of Hanukkah it is, that, that means that every, every additional candle is part of the mitzvah. It's not just hidur, it's not just you doing it beautifully, it's mitzvah min you're doing the mitzvah itself, it became part of the mitzvah. Or is it, is it hidur, it's me doing it beautifully. Based on this, we must revisit the nafkamina that we brought it before. Remember, what was it? We're talking about a situation, if a person only has enough oil, um, to light two candles on the third night. How many should he light? We thought the answer would be that if you're following the days, then being that you don't have enough to, to, to match the amount of days, so you should go back to only lighting one and not lighting two. But now that we understand sort of what's taking place here, what's at the heart of that opinion, and we understand that what's at the heart of that opinion is that these additional candles are part of 
the guf ha mitzvah, the body of the mitzvah itself. So we would never tell somebody to to go back to one, even if you can't match the exact amount of, of days. Nevertheless, if you have two, you should lie two because they're part of the mitzvah. You might ask me, okay, someone walking by your house might confuse what day it is. That is a maybe, that's a chashash. But one thing we do know, every additional candle is part of the mitzvah. And in that case, they're really, both opinions would say, you use all the oil you have to light two candles, even on the third night. So we're, so what, we have to now try to find a nafkimina, a difference in halacha between these two opinions, not only in the case of B'diyavid, but in the case of Lachat And what would that be? It would be almost in the opposite direction. And that is that in a case where a person has only enough oil to light six candles, the first night he light, lit properly, second night he lit, it's the eighth night and he only has enough oil to light six. How many should he light? So let's recognize what we just did. What we just did was we said that if you, according to the opinion that we're following the number of days, you should never ever go back to one. So you have six, light six. But who will be the one stopping you from lighting six on this eighth night? It will be the other opinion. They would say, no, 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 no. You can't go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then back to six. That's Muridin. Muridin. If you only have six, then you should leave the category of Mahadim and Mahadim all together and just light one. Why? Because really, according to this opinion, there is a flexibility. It's not a demand of the mitzvah itself. It's about your hider. And in this case, if you would be lighting six, it would actually be counterproductive for your hider because the whole idea of the hider is increasing. If yesterday you did seven and tonight you do six, it disqualifies that. That's obviously not a hider. And therefore, you go back to lighting just one. In other words, we, we now recognize that the opinion following the days of Hanukkah is not arbitrary. It's very, very intrinsic in the mitzvah of Hanukkah. Okay, so we went through our halachic journey. However, at, like as we do every week in our halachic journey, we, journey, we also go to the nefesh halacha, to the neshama, to the soul of the halacha. It touches upon something that we actually did mention last week, and that is, but let me start with the question, actually. Why is it that of all the mitzvahs of the Torah, all the mitzvahs of throughout the year, all the Yom Tov, it is specifically Hanukkah that the Gemara wants us to know that there is regular, there's Mahadrin, there's Mahadrin, Mina Mahadrin, and the halacha then becomes that mahadrin, mina mahadrin, is the widespread minag to the point that everybody nowadays, when they do the mitzvah of Hanukkah, they do it in the best, most mahudr, beautiful way. Why is that? No, and when it comes to Lul and Esther, we don't see that. When it comes to, I don't know, uh, things of Purim, things of Pesach, we don't find such a thing that the widespread minag amongst everyone is to do the, the most beautiful way. Yet when it comes to Hanukkah, everybody um, does it the most beautiful way. <laughs> and just to add, just to, for humor's sake, everyone was doing it the most beautiful way before it was commercialized. You know, some people have complaints that, that Hanukkah was too much commercialized because of uh, the season of sales and things like that, but, you know, with gifts and things. But in seriousness, the, the Mahadra Mina Mahadra, the fact that everyone was following that um, approach of lighting the menorah was always the case. So why is that? The truth is the whole miracle of Hanukkah, the whole story of Hanukkah, the narrative of Hanukkah is really a Mahadran, Mina Mahadran story. Why is that? Because when the Hashmanayim come in to the Beis HaMikdash and they don't find any pure oil, you don't find any pure oil, According to halacha, at that moment, they were supposed to light impure oil, defiled oil. The rule is, when the community needs something, even if it's tame, it's duchuya, it's pushed away. Obviously, the best way is to do it purity, in purity. But if you do not have pure oil, you use impure oil. But they weren't satisfied with that. 
And not only were they not satisfied with that, Hashem was not satisfied. Hashem wanted them, did a miracle that they should find a pure jug. Why is that? Because Hanukkah represents a, a relationship with Hashem that we're not just trying to be Yoitzah. You understand? We're not just trying to do the bare minimum. The mere requirement. Okay, I could do it, do it with impure oil. I'll do it with impure oil. Hanukkah represents a unity that we have with Hashem where we want to go above and beyond. It's a love, Hashem's love for us and our love for Him. And when it's a matter of, of relationship, a matter of love, we're not just trying to, to fill the boxes, check the boxes and do the bare minimum. Yes, the halacha would say you could do it, you could light impure oil in the base of English. But you know something? It's a relationship with Hashem. It's the menorah. The menorah is a symbol that Hashem is with us. It's not only about us trying to fulfill our requirements. It's about doing the best of the best. Mahadrim mina mahadrim. The whole story of Hanukkah is a mahadrim mina mahadrim. We're not trying to do the bare minimum. We're not trying to do the, the mere requirement. We're going above. We're going beyond because we're expressing our love for Hashem. Hashem expressed his love for us. So to summarize what we learn tonight we started out we quoted from the Gemara that um, the two different opinions on how to understand Machlekes of Beisham and Basilo and why do you say increase or why do you say decrease is it because of the amount of days of Hanukkah or is it because um, we increase in Kedusha and Holiness or you follow um, the Karbanis of Sukkot where there's a decrease we went through a whole list of nafkaminas of differences between understanding the machlekes this way or that way. The first basic one was really the core of the Rambam verse Taisus on are we saying that every individual should have a set of eight or we're talking about every household? And the difference is, what are you most worried about? Are you most worried about the amount of days that only one per household? Or are you most concerned about increase versus decrease? Increase, every single person should increase. We said, okay, that's a beautiful enough community, but that's not a, that doesn't apply for us today because we have the halacha that everybody does it every single night and we increase. So we said, okay, the first enough community is a bidiyav enough community. If the second night, someone mistakenly only lit one, the third night, what should they do? Should they light two? Or three, or let me ask that question differently. Should they must they light three, or is two good enough? If you're following the days, you must light three. If you're following increase and not decrease, two would be good enough because you're increasing relative to your yesterday. Then we went on a journey trying to find the difference, not in a case where a person made a mistake, in a case where a person is limited. They lit properly the first night and the second night. The third night, they only have enough oil for two candles. What should they do? Initially, we thought that the opinion that says following the days would tell you to go back to one. And the opinion that says increase, don't decrease, would say do two. Because you want to at least keep it the same level as you did last night. But then we say, if we dig deeper into the opinions here, we'll realize that that's not the case. Because what's really at play here is, is it part and intrinsic of Hanukkah, the increase? Or is it a, a side matter? A matter that based on that we said there would never be a case where, where the opinion that says we follow the days would tell someone to go back to one because every additional candle is part of the mitzvah itself. It became part of the body, the goof of the mitzvah. The only nafkabina we were able to find was if in the eighth day a person only has enough oil for six. Should they light six or not? The opinion that says that we're going following the days would say yes, because it's part of the mitzvah. You should light however much you, you can. The opinion that says they we're doing it to increase and not to decrease, they would say, no, 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 no. You should light only one candle because you definitely lost the ability to do mahadrim in a mahadrin because you will not be able to do the mitzvah in its most beautiful way. And it's not a demand of the Hanukkah candles. It's a demand on you and you're not able to fulfill it. Um, we concluded by going deeper into why this mitzvah in particular, do we have mehadrim and mehadrim becoming the widespread? We realized that the reason for that is because the whole Hanukkah is about mehadrim and mehadrim. 
not being satisfied with the bare minimum, expressing a love for Hashem and Hashem expressing his love for us, which is beyond just the bare minimum and mere requirements. For Elch and Chanukah, everyone, Elch and Chanukah, Shol be gesund, and I look forward to continue learning in Mitzvah next week. Thank you, Rabbi Wolvovsky. Thank you, everybody, for your participation.